Hi there! Welcome to the sixth episode of the Filters tutorial. Continuing from the previous episode, where we learned how to analyze filters using the transfer function and its poles and zeros, you see two new examples of circuit analysis today, this time of the second order. In this video, I decided to bypass all the boring mathematical calculations and show directly to you all the results, which will give you the necessary formulas for calculating your own filters of the same kind. However, the calculations are still available in a companion video that you can watch on Patreon. After watching this video, please head there if you are interested on that part, and the link is of course in the video description below. Now, let's begin. Hi there! I am Carlo Carrano, and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy. Here is the schematic of the first of the two filters I show you in this video. It is a second-order passive RC high-pass filter. Its design is an extension of another filter we have seen in a previous episode, the first-order passive RC high-pass filter. It is in fact made out of two first-order filters in cascade. Unfortunately, as it is always the case, Putting two such filters in this configuration does not only increase the attenuation of the filter, but it also changes the cutoff frequency. And that is because the output of the first order filter on the left is loaded by the input impedance of the first order filter on the right. And this load causes a change in behavior, and in particular causes the cutoff frequency to become higher than the one of the original first order high pass filter. To figure out in detail how this second order filter works, it is therefore important to do a complete analysis of it with the use of its transfer function. So I will show you the transfer function and I will calculate the poles and the zeros using real values for the resistors and the capacitors. Then I will show you a simulation of the filter to double check the mathematical calculations. As I was saying, this second-order filter is obtained putting in series two first-order filters, like in this picture. This one on the left is the input, on which we will apply a voltage VI. The one on the right is instead the output, which will provide us the voltage VO. From this circuit we can now determine the transfer function using a rearrangement of the KBL, the Kirchhoff voltage law. But, as promised, I will just fast forward through all the math and go quickly to the final results. You can see that the transfer function has two polynomials, one at the numerator and the other one at the denominator, both of the second grade. This tells us that the transfer function itself has two zeros and two poles. The two zeros, which are the roots of the equation of the numerator, are obviously both equal to zero. To find the two poles, we need to go through some more math to actually find the roots of the denominator equation. Fast forward a little bit, and here is the list of all four points. The two poles can finally be expressed in terms of frequency, rather than the angular velocity. Note how the values of frequencies f1 and f2 can still be expressed in terms of the formula for the first order filter, but adjusted by a correction factor due to the load of the second part of the filter on the first. Let's now make an example by assigning arbitrary values to the resistors and the capacitors. I have chosen a 1 mega ohm and 1 nanofarad to simplify the calculations. We obtain the two poles at frequencies 60.79 Hz and 416.7 Hz. 
At this point, we have the values for both zeros and both poles, and so we can draw the body diagrams for this filter using the approximation method that we learned in the previous episode. Let's start by drawing the axis for the magnitude diagram, and then those for the phase diagram. Let's now draw on the f-axis the location of zeros and poles. To build the magnitude diagram, we need to note that the highest value of the transfer function is 1, which corresponds to 0 dB. Any other value of the diagram will lay below that. Since we have two zeros at the origin, we know that in that area we will have to go up, and then the two poles will cancel one by one the slope of the diagram. So, uh, the diagram at the end will be flat after the second pole. Right before the second pole, and after the first pole, we have a line that goes down with a slope of 20 dB per decade, and before the first pole, the slope increases of another 20 dB. We indicate the slope number with a negative sign in front of it, to remember that this is an attenuation, not an amplification, although the slope is actually positive in this case. Now that we have these straight lines in place, we can draw the actual approximation of the magnitude, which will be tangent to the straight lines toward infinity. Now, if you remember that the cutoff frequency of C is the one at which the attenuation equals minus 3 dB, we can identify on this diagram the actual value of the frequency, if these diagrams were drawn with greater precision and on graph paper, of course. Anyway, we will remedy to that once we do the simulation, but for now we are interested in just learning the concept. Let's now take a look at the phase diagram. Remember that for such a diagram, we draw independent diagrams for each zero and each pole. Then, we graphically add up all the diagrams and we obtain the actual phase diagram of the transfer function. I have drawn here also some extra lines to figure out where the angles are supposed to be and I use different colors for each individual diagram, and another one for the total. And as for the magnitude diagram, once we have drawn the final straight lines, we can draw a better approximation for the actual phase diagram, which is the line in blue. Let's now run the same schematic through the simulator, so we can have better body diagrams, and we can better determine the actual cutoff frequency of the filter. Let's start by drawing the schematic on the workbench. We need two capacitors and two resistors, then we need a source of signal, and we need to give a value to all the components. And finally, we need to connect all the components. Now we need to set the signal source to give a sine wave, and we click on the checkbox that will allow the simulator to control the value of the frequency. Done that, we open the settings of the simulation, and we specify that we want to run a simulation in the frequency domain, since we want to trace the body diagrams. And then we specify the range of frequencies that will be used. If later we discover that the range was not fine, we can still go back, change it, and rerun the simulation, of course. Now that the circuit is ready, we need to attach the probe to the point where we want to take the measurement. We adjust the size of the window that will trace the magnitude in the B, and then we run the simulation. Once the simulation is done, we can see the expected magnitude diagram. And now we can also add another probe to trace the phase of the signal. We now have both body diagrams. If we enlarge the one for the magnitude, we can also make a reasonable read of the cutoff frequency, which seems to be around 400 Hz or a little less, which is exactly what we expected. Let's now take a look at another filter. This one too is a second order filter, but it is made with resistance and inductance. We call it a second order passive RL high pass filter. Again, we have VI as the input signal and VO as the output. To simplify calculations, the two resistors have the same value, and so do the two inductors. Of course, they don't have to be the same, and you are free to try with different values, R1, R2, L1, and L2, and see what happens with the calculations. And here is again the schematic on my drawing board. We have two resistors of value R, and two inductors of value L. We have the input signal VI, and the output signal VO. And again, let's fast forward through all the math to find the transfer function.
And there we go. Here is the actual transfer function of our filter. Do you see the similarities with the one from the RC filter? The only noticeable difference is that instead of having factors like 1 over RC, we now have factors R over L. This transfer function has two zeros and two poles. The roots of the numerator, our zeros, are both equal to zero. The roots of the denominator, our poles, have the same corrective factor as the RC filter, yes, the same. This time, however, they correct the value of R over L. Fast forward again a little bit, and here are the values of the two poles in Hertz when we set the components to 1 kilo and 100 millihenry. And so we have an F1 of 608 Hertz and an F2 of 4167 Hertz. And this is the list of all poles and zeros. These poles and zeros are very similar to those for the RC filter, and so are the body diagrams that can be derived for them. And now let's take a look at the simulator, so we can figure out where in the range between F1 and F2 the actual cutoff frequency lies. So we build the schematic, we assign the values to the components for which we choose again 1k and 100 millihenries, we attach the first probe to measure the magnitude in dB, we set the signal generator, exactly like we did in the previous case, we define the frequency domain and the range of frequencies, and then we run the simulation. And look, this time we have chosen a range that doesn't fit well the whole diagram, and so let's enlarge the range a bit and run again the simulation. Ok, now the diagram is easier to read, let's add the other one for the phase. Um, uh, yes, I had to try some trick to be able to define both body diagrams. Sometimes this interface is not that friendly. Ok, now we have both. Let's rerun the simulation one more time. And here are the two expected diagrams. And again, enlarging the magnitude diagram, we can identify where the cutoff frequency is located, which seems to be at about uh, 4 kHz. From here, comparing with the previous example, we can state that for high-pass filters, the new cutoff frequency is always in between the two poles and closer to the pole of higher value. I believe that now that you have seen how to calculate the transfer functions and determine the cutoff frequencies for these circuits, and those from the previous episodes, you have enough knowledge to be able to analyze and therefore design any other passive filter, even with a mix of all three components we have used, resistors, inductors and capacitors. And so, at this point, rather than continuing working on more passive filters, we will use the next episode to start talking about active filters. You'll see that we can apply the same concepts we have seen so far, but with a twist. Curious to learn how the active filters work? Come and watch the next video. And to prevent yourself from missing the next episode, subscribe and click on the notification bell. And so, see you in the next video, and as usual, happy experiments! <laughs>